Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Zorn, and today I'll be performing a Claris ultrasound for my patient, looking at his bladder and his prostate to evaluate his lower urinary tract symptoms. So I have the C3, the small curved array, third generation Claris system, and I'll be linking up now to my Claris app on my iPhone to have the pre-programmed prostate settings so it will best discriminate the tissues around the bladder and the prostate. So let's begin. So I've already applied the gel to the patient's lower abdomen, just above the pubic bone. And I'll apply and start the filming. So up front, I can see clearly his bladder. I'm gonna scan and fan from the upper part of the dome of the bladder and scan downward nice and slowly, getting an idea if there's any bladder wall defects, diverticulum, and if there's any filling defects or hypoechoic areas suggestive of a bladder stone. So here we go, scanning up and down, clearly a nice homogeneous, uh, smooth wall of the bladder. And I'll usually pick the largest aspects uh, of this bladder, which looks pretty full. And I'll go ahead and measure the bladder wall thickness. So typically this gives us an idea if there's some hypertrophy of the prostate which will create more resistance of a bladder outlet obstruction and create some thickening of the bladder wall. So we'll go ahead and save that image. Moving my way down at the bladder neck to see if there's any median lobe, any protrusion centrally of the prostate into the bladder. So here we can see the prostate in view. I can zoom in, centralize the image. And there we go. So I don't see any median lobe. If you want, we'll just go sagittally, do the same views. Again, just making sure that there's no anterior wall tumor or defect. So clearly fanning from both sides of the bladder. Clearly, no abnormalities. So I'll go ahead and freeze, capture that image. That's my third of the bladder. Then I'll come back to the mid view of the bladder neck, and this begins my contour of the prostate anatomy. So this is where I'll depress down on the belly. If certain patients who are more obese will ask them to lift up their panis so that it flattens the area. I usually want to push downward and cephalad toward the head and then get underneath the pubic bone to avoid the ultrasound being bounced off the pubic bone, which can get in the way for a view of the apex. So here we go, clearly small prostate. So I'm gonna fan it out and I can zoom in. So there are the seminal vesicles of the little bunny ears behind the prostate. Those are normal, and as I fan downward, there's our prostate. Just getting an idea of the echogenicity, is there any hypoechoic areas? Are there calcifications, suggestive of inflammation or chronic inflammation? And I'll just go ahead and save that large view and do my prostate volume measures. So there's my upper, my lower. Scoot that up, and then same thing for the width. Save that. So you can notice I'm doing this all with my iPhone with my thumb. So this is all readily available, quick to your finger, and uh, rapidly give your findings. So again, same idea, torque down. I'm looking for the seminal vesicles. And here they are, one and two. And take that largest view of the prostate. Here we go, you can see the funneling of the bladder neck and measure it to its width. And I'll save that. So there, all within a matter of a few minutes, I've got the pertinent information for anyone with BPH or lower urinary tract symptoms, where we will have their bladder status, their bladder wall thickness, making sure there's no secondary endpoints of chronic BPH, such as diverticulum or stones. And finally, the prostate, anatomy, the length, height, and width, and the absence or presence of a median lobe. So this completes the ultrasound findings, and I'm gonna go ahead now and move toward a final summary report. So I'll be able to enter in the patient's information and generate really smoothly with a click of a button some of the findings, the indications here was BPH, there was no catheter in place, who the referring physician was. And simply scrolling down, you can see the impressions pre-modeled into the app for the prostate. We can, echogenicity was normal. There's no other hypochoric or calcifications areas. It was symmetric. The seminal vesicles we saw, there was no median lobe, the bladder looked normal. At that point, I can either use Siri Dictate or type in my recommendations and notes. And once complete, send to the cloud for 
uh, implementation into the patient's chart or to the referring physician. So that completes our Claria C3 evaluation of the prostate and bladder for this gentleman.